Hi, Andrew here. Today I would like to teach you how to do synthetic division with the following example of x cubed minus 3x plus 2 all being divided by x plus 2. So the first thing is to focus on your dividend, which is the term to the left of that division symbol. Whatever the highest power of your x term is uh, will determine then how many boxes here are going to go inside of this, you know, overall big uh, black box. Well, it's not really a black box yet because it didn't close it up, but you get what I'm saying. So in other words, um, we will need to have four coefficients. Now, if you notice, though, some one term is going to be missing here. You, need, you have to identify the pattern. You need x cubed, you need an x squared term, you need an x term, and then you need a constant term. So we're missing the x squared term, right? So in other words, you have to plug that in. And what you're going to do is you're going to plug that in by adding in x, uh, excuse me, 0x squared. What's 0 times x squared? Well, it's just 0, right? So if that's just 0, well, then this term doesn't really exist. And therefore, when I rewrite this function, this should now be equivalent to that, okay? But we need to know the coefficient there in order to properly do synthetic division. So what you want to do is now list out all your coefficients. If you don't see anything in front of it, it means it's a 1. All right, and now we're going to plug them all in. So we have 1, 0, negative 3, and then 2. Cool. Then what we're going to do is we're going to focus on our divisor. And what you're going to do is set that divisor equal to x plus 2 equal to 0. You're going to solve for the 0 value. All right, so minus 2 on both sides, and x is going to be equal to negative 2. Now what this does is this tells you now what number gets plugged in to here for your synthetic division. So that's going to be a negative 2. Now that you have the entire row filled out, what you're going to do is now follow a simple set of rules. First thing is just drop the leading coefficient all the way down to the bottom, 1. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take this number and multiply it by this value to get the value in the adjacent cell here. So negative 2 times a 1 is going to be a negative 2. Then what you do is you simply add these numbers together. So that's going to be a negative 2. Then you're going to repeat the process. Take this new number, negative 2, multiply it by this outside term of negative 2, and that's going to be a positive 4, right? So then you're going to add these terms together. Negative 3 and a positive 4 is going to be a positive 1. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take this term, multiply it by this term to get the next term in your adjacent cell here, and that's going to then be a negative 2. And when you take 2 and add negative 2 to it, you get 0. Cool. Now, what these values represent are the following. The last term here will always represent your, your remainder. The next term is going to represent your constant term. The term after that is going to be the x term. The term after that is going to be the x squared term, dot, 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 x cubed, x to the fourth, etc. However many values you have. Now, these there's one more step before we can start writing out the quotient formula. It's not really necessary in this problem, but i got to teach it to you. So you have to go back to your dividend, no, divisor. Which one's that? Divisor, dividend, divisor. Yeah, it's your divisor. you got to go back to your divisor, the thing to the right, all right, of that division symbol. And what you have to do is you have to look at the leading coefficient of your x term. Whatever that value is, if it's a 1, then what you have to do down here is you have to divide now everything by 1. Now, obviously, dividing everything by 1 doesn't really do anything, okay? But if this value were a 2 now, well, guess what you're dividing every value now by? It would be a 2, okay? Or if it was a 14 million, then you'd be dividing it by 14 million. So now, no matter how the problem changes, you have tools, a tool to use in order to tackle that problem. So in this particular case, like I said, it's really not necessary, but you would want to think about doing that. And basically now from here, what you can start to do is you can start to write out your quotient. So what we have here is we have 1x squared, which is just the same thing as saying x squared. Then we have minus 2x. Then we have plus 1. And then we have plus 0. This is your remainder, plus 0. Divided then by whatever your divisor is, x plus 2. Now, obviously, 0 divided by anything, I don't care what that anything is, the whole thing is just 0, right? So you can kind of eliminate that. So your quotient here is just x squared minus 2x plus 1. And that would then be the answer, okay? In other words, 
When you take this term divided by this term, you get this term. Okay? Now you can do a simple check. And what I would do is write out a simple equation based on what I just mentioned. Bam. So we have this term being divided by this term, which should then equal this term that we found. Okay? Now what you want to do to check yourself is just simply make up a number for x and see if this equation works out. Choose zero to make your life easy. So anywhere you have then an x, it just disappears, right? Any Or multiplied by x, it just disappears. Because anything times zero is just going to be zero. So what you're left with is then on the left-hand side, you're left with 2 over 2. And does 2 over 2 equal then the term that's left on the right-hand side is a 1? So is 1 equal to 1? Well, of course it isn't. No, it's not equal, right? You think this is equal? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Stop yelling at the computer. I can't hear you. All right. I'm just joking with you. Of course it's equal. All right. It is indeed equal. And therefore I know that the quotient is correct. Thanks for tuning in guys. If this helped you out at all, if you don't mind giving us a hand, like subscribe and even better telling some of your classmates. All right. We'd love to help more people. And we have thousands of videos out there, not only in mathematics here, but we have also phys uh, physics, chemistry as well. And we solve specific problems because guess what you're going to see on your test? specific problems. All right. So you have to know how to approach them. That's what we specialize in. We'd love to help you out with more. Check us out. Take care.